So you're thinking of making the move to Austin, Texas, and naturally you've been doing your homework looking at the Cedar Parks, the Round Rocks, the Pflugervilles, the Georgetowns, the Leanders of the world, and what's that? Liberty Hill? There's another option for you to consider? Yes, there is. And in this video, we are going to be going over everything you need to know before possibly moving to Liberty Hill. So if that's the reason you clicked on this video, stay tuned, because we're getting after it right now. Hello again, everybody. If this is your first time on the channel, my name is Frank and I'm part of a team of agents at the award-winning JB Goodwin Brokerage located right here in the fabulous Austin, Texas. Each and every week we put out tons of new content all in regards to living in Austin, Texas, the good and the bad. So if you haven't already, consider subscribing to this channel and ringing that little bell so that you're notified each and every time we put out a new video. In addition to that, we love the reach outs we've been getting all the time from people just like you who are in need of our help when relocating to this great city of Austin, Texas. We love learning about your lifestyle and placing you in that perfect spot to make your move as smooth as possible. But the only way we can do that is again, by you reaching out to us. So do not hesitate, whether you're nine days away or 90, go ahead and shoot us that text, send us that email, give us that call any day of the week, any time of day. So yes, there is yet another town within the deceivingly large Greater Austin area for you to consider when you are planning your relocation to the Greater Austin area. And it is called Liberty Hill. So if you've been a longtime subscriber and you've heard me talk endlessly about the Georgetowns of the world, the Round Rocks, the Leanders, the Cedar Parks, the Pflugervilles, the Mainers, the Huddos, North Austin, South Austin, all of that, even more north is yes, Liberty Hill, Texas. What I personally like about Liberty Hill, Texas is that it is going to be one of of the more unique towns when compared to Round Rock, Cedar Park, or Leander. A lot of these places, yes, they have their own traits and quirks that make them different from each other. However, at the end of the day, these are all suburbs and they all, in many ways, mimic each other. Living here, if you've ever been to Round Rock, yes, it probably has the most things to do. It is the most established of all of these various towns, but in essence, essentially speaking, if you've been to Round Rock, in many ways you've been to Leander, you've been to Georgetown, you've been to Cedar Park, so on and so forth. So then what is it about Liberty Hill which sets it apart from the others, at least relatively speaking, in regards to the affordability, to perhaps the vibe or aesthetic, the scenery, the things to do, all of that good stuff which we are getting to right now. So let's begin with two things which we will make one thing essentially under the same umbrella, which is going to be the location and the commute. So in my opinion, because I am quite brutally honest on this channel, I think the biggest downside to Liberty Hill is in fact its proximity to everything else. Um, Georgetown and Leander, if you are familiar at all with the map of the Greater Austin area, Leander and Georgetown are pretty much two of the furthest away types of suburbs you can find, at least in relation to the domain or the downtown metro area. But then Liberty Hill says, hold my beer, I'm actually going to beat out both of you in proximity. So in my opinion, that is a bad thing when you're thinking about commutes, because let's say you already want to live in Leander. Leander, for example, is going to be maybe 15 minutes, give or take, from the tech corridor of Austin, Texas, and maybe 30 to 35 minutes away from that downtown metro area, the heart of Austin. Georgetown will be similar, but it is going to be just a little bit further than Leander, since Georgetown is a little bit more north. And not to overwhelm you, but for reference, while we're mentioning these places, Cedar Park is probably going to be one of the closer suburbs to all of the stuff that's going on in Austin, as well as Pflugerville and Manor. And then as you go more north, obviously, you go further away. In the case of Liberty Hill, we are now talking about 30 plus miles from the heart of downtown Austin. Instead of driving maybe 15 to the Tech Corridor and 30 to downtown, now you're going to be driving maybe 30 minutes to the Tech Corridor and possibly 45 or even 50 to the downtown metro area. So in many ways, you can see why I would describe this as less than desirable, especially if you're someone who's not going to be working from home. Because yes, I am just speaking right now about the commutes, but let's say even if you do work from home, what if you wanna go see a band? What if you wanna go hiking downtown? What if you wanna go to South Congress? What if you wanna spend a day with your family at the Domain Shopping Center? It's not like these places are necessarily a hop and a skip away. You're going to have to leave Liberty Hill 
to access these things. Now, obviously, if you're moving from San Francisco or Manhattan, these distances I'm talking about are child's play. You might scoff and roll your eyes and think, oh, that's it. But truth of the matter is, a lot of people who are relocating here are not from such places. They might be coming from a place where you can walk to work, cycle to work, or if it's just a few blocks by car. However, when I said it's a less than desirable trait about Liberty Hill, that was me being honest and ultimately subjective. It can be a very positive thing, and here's why. It'll take us into our next segment in this video, and that is going to be the small town vibe, the aesthetic, and the feel of Liberty Hill. What kind of town is it? So yes, everything I just mentioned about the distance and the commuting or even distance from things to do, while that all is true, I might be speaking to people who don't really give a damn about that. And that is something that Liberty Hill prides itself in and, and hangs its hat on, is being an escape from the hustle and bustle, even more so than a Leander, even more so than a Cedar Park, which are nice peaceful suburbs, but Liberty Hill takes it to a new level. And here's why. Liberty Hill, more so than any other town in the greater Austin area, at least in my opinion, is going to be the most rural. It is going to have the most small town feel, even more so than Georgetown, which hangs its hat on being a small town, but you go to Georgetown and they have big box retailers, they have buildings, they have nice downtown areas, they have a lot of things to do while maintaining their charm, whereas Liberty Hill is flat out small town living. And what I mean by that is if you've ever seen the Pixar movie Cars, I'm assuming most of us have, I would hope most of us have, they have a little town in that movie called Radiator Springs and that's where the protagonist of the film meets all of these people that he thinks are kooky because they live in a small town, they turn out to be nice. But if you can remember in your mind's eye what Radiator Springs looked like in that movie and it was just, I'm exaggerating, but more or less a single road with a gas station and, and maybe a couple shops. In essence, I'm not trying to be mean to Liberty Hill, but in essence, that is the vibe of it. That is more or less, to some extent, what you can expect. And for some people, oh God, that's not what I want. I'm coming from New York. I'm coming from San Francisco. I don't want tiny Radiator Springs type of town. And that's cool. But a lot of other people, especially a lot of the clients we help, are wanting that drastic change of pace, are wanting a complete culture shock, if you will, voluntarily. So yes, Liberty Hill is going to be rural. You're going to have your oak trees. It's going to be in much of the hill country. As of recently, the population count in Liberty Hill is going to be just shy of only 40,000 people. And for reference, Leander is nearing 80,000, expecting to hit 150, quarter million in the coming years as it really explodes. Whereas Liberty Hill, yes, it is growing and it's on the verge of booming relatively, it has no plans like Leander. It has no plans like Round Rock. L Liberty Hill wants to be Liberty Hill. It's not trying to become a new tourist attraction. So while the population of just under 40,000 is of course going to evolve and grow over time, not to have a crystal ball or anything, but I wouldn't necessarily forecast it doubling or just exploding. It is always going to, hopefully, maintain its true authentic small town charm. And while we're on the subject, this is something that a lot of people are attracted to in regards to looking for a home. Because the truth of the matter is, generalizing for the most part in Round Rock, in North Austin, in Manor, in Leander, the houses are going to be relatively close together. I personally grew up near the Cedar Park area and my house was so close to the neighbor's house I could hear them having arguments, I could see them cooking dinner, and you get used to it, but it's never really ideal. And that is, as I mentioned, the case in a lot of these towns or suburbs in the greater Austin area. So in contrast, on a very refreshing note, you might have that to some degree in certain neighborhoods in Liberty Hill, certain master plan communities, if you will. But another great thing about Liberty Hill is the fact that a lot of the homes are either very spread out or if not that, they're on acres. So you might have neighbors, yes, but they're a little bit down the street, which for me is completely a foreign concept because I never had that growing up. But for a lot of you, that might be just that slice of paradise you're looking for. Just to give you an example, I have a close family friend who lives in Liberty Hill and I've been to her house a number of times 
And it's really interesting because she's not much older than me. She works in healthcare. She's not making any big bucks, if you will. And I went to her house for the first time a little while ago. And it's a nice home. It's nothing crazy. It's not too small, not too large. It's, I would say it's an average house. But it's not only gorgeous inside, her neighbors are so far apart from her house and her backyard has so much space. While it isn't uncommon to find a house that has a nice, decent backyard for your dog, for your kids, Liberty Hill takes it to an extreme, which is really the point I'm trying to make. In her relatively modest for Liberty Hill standards backyard, she had a pool with a slide, she had a trampoline, and she had a playscape. So that's just to give you an idea. I'm not saying you can't have a pool or a playscape or a trampoline in your backyards anywhere else in the greater Austin area, but you might be able at best to fit one or two, not all three. And it's not like, as I mentioned, it's she's a special case. That's just an average home in Liberty Hill. So it really is a nice change of pace when being compared to the other suburbs. I'm not saying none of them offer acreage either, but it is going to be in less abundance than Liberty Hill. And it is the trade-off you make when you accept your proximity to the tech corridor or downtown or overall fun things to do. And you take the good with the bad, enjoying your house with an abundance of land. Next, we're going to be talking about the affordability and the property tax rates in Liberty Hill, Texas. Two financial categories, if you will, that we're going to bunch under one umbrella, one category in this video. Truth be told, this is where Liberty Hill really shines. It is going to be just about four and a half percent cheaper than the city of Austin to live in, and it is going to be just around seven percent cheaper than the national average to live in. And while your median home price is going to be right around $450,000, which yes, is comparable to the other suburbs I've mentioned, the cool thing about Liberty Hill is it's low end is going to be cheaper than a majority of the other options I've mentioned, with its low end being as cheap as the high twos or the low threes. I'm not saying that's impossible to find in perhaps Cedar Park or Georgetown or Renrock, but it is going to be much more difficult than perhaps in Liberty Hill. So not only is the cost of living going to be cheaper than pretty much the rest of the greater Austin area, but you're going to have a larger variety of options that could potentially fit your budget. And before I forget, for those of you out there who are in a position to stretch the budget, worry not, Liberty Hill does have its luxury options in excess. As I mentioned, it's going to be Yes, larger homes, but because of the nature of Liberty Hill, your higher price end there is going to buy you more land, more acres, perhaps than it will buy you a mansion. Not to say you can rule out the mansions, but if you are coming there with seven, eight hundred thousand, a million plus, and you'd like to spend it in Liberty Hill, that is what you can expect. Now, in addition to that, the property taxes in Liberty Hill are going to be, in my opinion, the best thing that Liberty Hill has to offer more than its affordability, more than its quietness, more than its land, more than its schools, which I'll get to. And it is because the property tax rate on average in Liberty Hill is just around 1.9%, just shy of 2%. And you might be watching this in another state thinking, whoa, that's expensive because you might be used to 0.5 or even 1% or 1.5%. It might be more than you expected. But if you've been a longtime subscriber, you've heard me talk and whine about the property taxes in the greater Austin area because on average in the city, the cheapest you can get might be 2.2 or 3 or 2.4, but everywhere else you're going to have at least a property tax rate of 2.5%. And very commonly, you're going to see it hit 3%, like some of the new builds we just toured in Leander. Check out that video, by the way. We're going for 3.02%, which is astronomical. And the same can be said for the Georgetowns or Round Rocks of the world if you're looking at brand new areas, newer developments, and relatively nicer places. So what I'm getting at is a good property tax rate in any of the other suburbs is going to be at least two and a half. And in Liberty Hill, the highest tax rate you can find is going to be probably around 2.6 or 2.7 at the worst. So if I'm speaking to someone who really has an issue with the property tax rates here in Austin. You know, maybe you are okay with a certain number in your head, but gosh, you're looking everywhere and it's just a bit steeper than you'd like. Liberty Hill might be your best option. While it isn't going to be 0.5%, it is certainly going to be a tremendous breath of fresh air compared to the other places in 
the greater Austin area. Now, before moving on, if you've got any agreements, disagreements, or questions for us to get involved with, drop them all down below in the comments and let us hear from you. In addition to that, if we've been providing value for you in this video, we ask that you consider liking the video as it really helps our channel grow and tells us that we're doing a good enough job for you. Remember to subscribe. And lastly, if there's anyone in your life who you know is considering a move to Austin, Texas, and would like to learn more, go ahead and share our content with them and spread the good word. Okay, so next on this video, we are going to briefly touch on the subject of the school district in Liberty Hill. And if you are someone who is seriously considering a relocation to Austin, Texas, wherever it may be, surely you are someone who has been looking up and doing your homework on the school districts. And assuming that is the case, surely you have as well noticed two that really pop up on any website, on any list. One of them is going to be the Leander Independent School District, and the other is going to be the Round Rock Independent School District. These two districts, to give you just an idea, are going to be the powerhouses. These are the cream of the crop school districts, not just in the greater Austin area, but in the state of Texas. These are highly revered public school districts, brand new football stadiums, brand new auditoriums, brand new schools themselves being spat out, it would seem, just every few years. Superb graduation rates and superb ACT and SAT test scores, all while each serving between 30 and 50,000 students on average. So yeah, I'm going to be honest with you, it really doesn't get much better than that if you're wanting your children to be enrolled in public schools in the greater Austin area. But maybe for whatever reason, you don't want to live in or around Lander. Maybe for whatever reason, you don't want to live in or around Round Rock. Maybe you do have your eye on Liberty Hill, Texas. And the good news is, while it is a microscopic school district, at least in comparison to these other giants that I mentioned, it is still going to be very respectable. Unlike perhaps the Manor Independent School District, which is also going to be quite small, that one has a certain reputation. That one still has room to grow. That one still isn't necessarily rated very high and isn't going to be quite as respected of a smaller school district. In contrast to that though, on the other hand, Liberty Hill is going to be quite respected in spite of its size. The Liberty Hill Independent School District is going to have just shy of about 4,900 students, so we'll call it about 5,000. But even still, with it not being such a powerhouse, with it not having the same praise or reverence as Leander or the Round Rock Districts, niche.com still gave the Liberty Hill Independent School District a letter grade of an A minus. And if you're not familiar with that website, it is pretty critical. It is not shy of giving some district a B minus or a C plus. So for Liberty Hill to be, you know, the little engine that could type of school district, for it to be graded so high is a testament to the quality of schools out there in the middle of nowhere. Moving right along, we are going to talk about the things to do in Liberty Hill, Texas, or lack thereof. And that's the thing, you take the good with the bad. If you're going to be living in Liberty Hill, Texas, you are going to be making certain sacrifices. The biggest I've already mentioned in regards to the distance from everything, but it goes hand in hand because you're looking at distance from everything because everything is not in Liberty Hill. And what I mean by that is, there just isn't that much to do. For many people, that's considered a negative. And of course, as I mentioned, for many people, that's a positive. It just depends on who you are and what walk of life you're coming from. But yes, as it currently stands in Liberty Hill, you're going to have your dog parks, you're going to have your splash pads for the kids, you're going to have your soccer fields, your baseball fields, lots of outdoorsy things to do. But you're not really going to have a Whole Foods. You're not really going to have a Trader Joe's. You're not really going to have a Nordstrom Rack. You're not gonna have that Ikea. You're not gonna have the Outlet Mall. You're not gonna have these commercial big box retailers or even to some extent, really popular food chains. It's not going to have murals. It's not going to have museums. It's not going to have music venues. It's not going to have places to get your avocado on toast or your crystal shops, you know? It might have some of that to some extent, yes. I'm not saying it has absolutely nothing, but compared to perhaps downtown Austin, which has anything you can really imagine doing, it is just going to be drastically the complete opposite. And I know this is stating the obvious because with any suburb, whether it's Cedar Park, Round Rock, or Liberty Hill, obviously it's never going to compare to a downtown metro area anywhere in the country. But what I'm saying is that it's not even going to compare to its neighboring suburbs. That's the thing. You know, Round Rock might as well be a downtown metro area compared to something like Liberty Hill. As I mentioned, think about the movie Cars, Radiator Springs, you know what I mean? You're just, 
anything really that you wanna do, you're going to have to drive to either Georgetown, which is about 15 miles west, or just a little while south to Leander. The good news, however, is that Liberty Hill does have some future plans, and the biggest of which is going to be the River Ranch Park. It is supposed to be just approximately 1,300 acres, and it is going to be more outdoor space, right? It's not going to be a new domain like Leander's building, something called Northline. It's not going to be like the co-op that Hutto is developing, which is going to mimic the domain. Nothing like that. Not even Leander Springs, which is going to be a four acre lagoon in Leander. So obviously you can tell Leander's just ready to explode. So what I'm getting at is Liberty Hill doesn't have plans like that. Their plan right now is a 1300 acre outdoor park for camping, for riding horses, for cycling, for picnics, that kind of thing, which you can't really fault it for because Liberty Hill isn't trying to be pretentious. Liberty Hill isn't trying to become touristy. Liberty Hill isn't even trying to double their population. They are staying consistent with who they are. They are staying authentic with who they are, and they're not trying to be anybody but themselves. So Liberty Hill is a rural place. Liberty Hill is a place for outdoor fun, for quiet, peaceful living on land. So what do their future plans entail? More of the same. And you might be thinking that's a bad thing, or you might be thinking that's a great thing. It just depends again on who you are. Next, we'll briefly touch on the subject of politics. And don't worry, I won't be divisive, nor will I be controversial. I'm just going to paint you a picture of what you can expect. As you might predict with it being so far away from the city of Austin, yes, Liberty Hill is going to be more of a conservative place. Now, am I saying it's a place full of rednecks? Absolutely not. There is sophistication in Liberty Hill. It's not just Confederate flags on pickup trucks. No, no, no. But yes, it is going to be more red. It is going to be more traditional. And this can mean a lot of great things. A lot of the people we've helped move to Austin, Texas, tell us all the time, you know, we live in a blue state, we wanna to get to a red state. Or we live in a red state, we wanna to get to a blue city, Austin, in a red state, Texas. So we deal with all kinds of people, but one of the things that we hear the most is that people are really ready for that Southern culture, that Southern hospitality. And I'm talking, yes, about the kind neighbors. I'm talking about the warmth. I'm talking about people letting you merge on the street. I'm talking about people stopping you on your dog walk to ask you how your day is and inviting you to their cookout or their garage party. All of the things you think might be a stereotype or a myth about the South, Kid you not, they're true. We hear it in our comments, we hear it from people who move here like, oh my gosh, it's actually true. People are this way. But the reason I mention that is because if you are moving to the downtown metro area of Austin, Texas, or anywhere remotely close to it, it's going to be the case, but not quite as much as you'd think. I've spoken with people who've relocated close to the city, maybe not in it, but just you know, five or 10 minutes removed, and they were expecting the warmth, and they were expecting the Texan Southern culture, and the sense of community, and it wasn't there. And that's the thing, while the city of Austin is still a great place to live, it is a place that is full of people relocating. We call them transplants. People who aren't necessarily born and raised in the Southern culture. They're here from LA, they're here from San Francisco, they're here from New York a lot of the people who live downtown are like that. So, not saying that's wrong or that's bad or that they're bad people, but the city of Austin isn't going to feel as much like Texas. You have to leave the downtown metro area and go into the suburbs in order to really feel like you're no longer in Austin, you are in Texas. And that's the thing that Liberty Hill really hangs its hat on. So yes, it's conservative. And someone who's watching this might think, great, that fits who I am or where maybe you're watching this and you think, oof, that is the opposite of who I am. Regardless of where you sit on the matter, it is still a nice, warm, very Texan and friendly place to live, politics aside. Lastly, I'm going to talk about what you can expect in terms of real estate and the market in Liberty Hill, Texas. And really, the best way I can put it is people who are currently moving there, who haven't been there for decades on decades, are doing so because they're looking at these other options in the greater Austin area, and they're thinking, 
that they might already be too established or that they might be too late. And while that isn't the case because we help people get into these areas all the time and truth of the matter is people close on their homes every day no matter what the location is. Yes, it is true though that they look at Liberty Hill, they look at the population, they look at the aesthetic, if you will, and think, okay, that is where we should go before it becomes one of these other places. And this is what Leander once was. If you've been a longtime subscriber, you've seen, I think we have four or five videos on Leander now. This is what it used to be. Leander was just a small town, but then it really started rapidly growing. They started really popping out the new build communities. They really started making plans to become the next hub of the greater Austin area, which it will be in the next five to 10 years. Just in the past decade alone, the population in Leander has doubled. And that was before the plans even were in place to really make it explode. So imagine now there's just no end in sight. And that was the case with Round Rock, which is now the most established mega city, town, suburb, if you will, of the greater Austin area. So what I'm getting at is with all of the massive relocation we're seeing, not just with the downtown area, but its surrounding suburbs and all of these places filling up, Liberty Hill, so it would seem, appears to just be doing its own thing. The market is going to be not piping hot, but warm. You're going to have your acres. And yes, they're also getting their new build communities as well. It's not quite as rapid as say Leander or Hutto for that matter, which are really boom towns, but it is developing nicely. And so if you don't want a previously owned home and you want to buy new, Liberty Hill has that. Or let's say you do want a previously owned home in a very well established neighborhood, Liberty Hill has that as well. One of them is called Santa Rita Ranch. And that, for example, has won the Master Plan Community of the Year Award, I believe, thrice. And that's just one community out of several that they have, aside from the new builds that they're rolling out as well. So me being me, I'll actually compare it to music. Bear with me. Let's say you don't want the biggest pop band. Let's say you don't want the biggest rock band. That is why the genre alternative exists. And that's the best example, if you will, that I can make for Liberty Hill, Texas. It is going to be a little bit lower under the radar. It is going to be authentic. It is going to be spread out. It is going to be quiet. It is going to be conservative. It is going to be more affordable. It is going to be less noisy. It is going to be perhaps a little bit boring. For better and worse, it's really just going to be itself. And that's what sets it apart in my eyes from the rest of the greater Austin area. But maybe you don't care about that. Maybe you don't want the acres. Maybe you don't care how quiet it is. Maybe you'd like to be much closer to the tech corridor. Maybe you'd like to be in the heart of Austin. Or maybe you'd like to be in between in a place like Round Rock that has a little bit of everything. Whatever your preferences are, rural, urban, suburban, that is what we pride ourselves on doing. That is what we are here for. Getting to know you and placing you in that perfect spot. Maybe it's near the best golf course. Maybe it's near the perfect school district for your children. Maybe you want a pool in the backyard, maybe you want a low property tax rate, whatever it is. But the only way we can help you is again by you reaching out to us. So do not hesitate. Whether you're nine days away or 90, go ahead and shoot us a text, send us an email, give us a call any day of the week, any time of day. And as mentioned, we put out tons of new content just like this one about the good and the bad of Austin, Texas each and every week. So if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel and ringing that little bell so that you're notified each and every time we put out a new video. In addition to that, if we provided any value for you, consider liking the video as well to really help our channel grow and tell us that we've done a good enough job. Drop a comment down below for us to get involved with if you have any questions, agreements, or disagreements. And lastly, if there's anyone in your life who you know is wanting to move to Austin, Texas and would like to learn more, go ahead and share our content with them and spread that good word. And until the next one, you guys, this is Living in Austin, Texas. I am your host. My name is Frank, and we will absolutely catch you later.